Anyways, um, thank you. Welcome everyone to our first Women in Analytics Spotlight. My name is Brad Pringer. I lead the partnership team at InfoTrust. And I have, I'm the one that actually has the privilege of working with fantastic women across our industry, across analytics specifically. And I'm thrilled to be part of this webinar series. And we have Stacey and Miriam with us, which we're gonna save the introductions until later, but super excited about this to kick off the series. We are gonna be doing many of these. So uh, if you have women in analytics that you work with, please send them our way. Uh, we want this to be an ongoing series to celebrate the amazingness that's happening across our field. So quick background on InfoTrust for those of you who have not heard of us. Again, I'm not, this is not a sales pitch, but we're an end-to-end -end digital analytics consultancy. So where we really focus with our partners is how do we advance the analytics maturity to help make their marketing be more efficient and effective. Why I'm kind of part of hosting this is I'm particularly passionate about this topic. I have two young daughters, Reese and Zoe, five and eight. And it, I think it's just crucial for them to have inspiration and leaders um, in all spaces, in all industries um, to look up to and be inspired by and you know we, we spend our time there's a there's a book series called um little people big dreams and it really celebrates or inspires people in history and science music arts design about these just amazing people and a lot of them are women about like what they did and i've been learning a lot myself as i'm reading to my children so i thought you know what why not why don't we create this series at infotrust we have the privilege of working across global organizations all over the world. And we work with amazing women about how they're really transforming their space. And let's learn more about them. Um, so that's what this call is for. It's only a 30 minute session. We know all of you are experiencing a lot of video fatigue. So this is a chance to kind of unplug from work. Please close down your email um, and get ready to be inspired because I'm about ready to introduce two amazing women to this. And just step away from your daily hustle and take this time to kind of learn. So with that, I'm co-hosting this episode with our very own Stacey Shiring. She is our VP of Customer Success. And I'm going to let her kick this off because she spends time delighting our customers like Miriam at Jackson Hewitt. And I'm just ex incredibly excited. I have to thank Miriam. We I've known her for a couple years now. We've had pre-COVID in person, we used to meet up quite a bit in New York, and she was actually one of the main people around this inspiration to, to do this series, and I thought she was the perfect first uh, guest in this. So with that, Stacey, I'll kick it over to you. I'm going to turn off my camera because nobody really wants to see me. I'm not the purpose of this session, so ladies, take it away. Stacey, over to you. Thank you, Brad. Uh, wonderful. So everybody, um, thank you for joining. I'd have to say one of my favorite things in analytics is getting to see um, strong women who are able to take on digital analytics um, and really crashing through some of the barriers that previously positions that were, we see most of the men holding. So when I see people like Miriam and get to hear their stories, I'm always delighted and want to share it with other people. So Miriam, thank you, first of all, for joining us today. And uh, I think it would be good for us all to just start off with a bit of general background on you. Sure, well, thank you for having me. And as Brad said, I'm excited because I was the witness of the origination of this idea. And I was like really excited when you guys decided to do it. And I think um, one thing before I um, tell a little bit more about myself, I would love to mention is um, I'm especially excited that you guys are doing it because Throughout all my career, I think InfoTrust has been one of the very rare partners that genuinely cares about their clients. And I know how genuinely you care about supporting us, men and women, but like in particular, like I've benefited from a partnership with you greatly. So I'm excited that you're doing this. Um, as for me, um, I always love to start my introduction with the fact that I come from the country of Georgia. And um, the reason why I mentioned that is kind of in every experience that I've gone through life and especially professionally, like Georgia and the US have completely different worlds, like have collided many times. And I think one of the things in, on the professional side of view, um, I started out with like many other people like not really knowing what I wanted to do, um, hating numbers. And fast forward after nine years of graduating from my bachelor's, I'm doing analytics now. 
Um, I moved to San Francisco, did my master's there, then I moved to New York. Have been really enjoying a great career growth and progression, I would say. Um, I'd like to believe that I'm good at what I do. Um, I was in healthcare before, and now I'm in taxes and financial services. Um, it's interesting um, in terms of how diverse the world of analytics really is. And I think that people sometimes think about analytics as very dry, very just numbers driven. Um, I personally believe there is a lot of creativity in it. And I'm super excited to see what's going to come next. And I think that's an interesting thing that you said is that uh, I hated numbers. Uh, I'd have to say that's one of the <laughs> things that I grew up as well. I, I grew up around a bunch of financial planners in my household. So I, I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do something more creative. And I love the big picture and the strategy work. Um, and that's what's so interesting about analytics is that somebody who may have that fear of numbers or maybe not think that they're very good at it, um, it, there is so much other work around um, analytics that you need to be able to be capable of. So if you can share a little bit more about um, what was the path for you to get into digital analytics space and how to feel more comfortable with the numbers and, and what other skills people need besides numbers? Sure. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons why I didn't like numbers is part um, on the education system. Um, I was a good student, like, you know, during my bachelor's, like calculus classes, statistics classes, I had good grades, but I don't think that anyone ever really helped me understand how I would be able to solve real world problems. And I think part of it was me dismissing, I'm just not interested in this. And the second, I think that led me to believe that I didn't understand the concept of math and data and a lot of things and I was kind of like mechanically solving a lot of problems just to pass the grades and um, it just felt to me like there was nothing that would keep me interested in, in that and I was not really good at it and um, what happened to me was a transformative experience during my master's um, my marketing analytics uh, class where um, I had a professor who really just kind of like broke everything for me in terms of this is actually really simple. And oh my God, here are the real problems that I can solve. And I think that the reason why I chose marketing as a real problem was that I care about people. And for me, caring about the customer and solving the problems for customers um, was really a purpose that I found in my profession. And then kind of like backtracking from that was that looking at where the digital marketing was going how technology was changing the landscape of the consumer experience and everything. Like there was just no other way for me to go other than just get really good at it. Um, and when I say get really good at it, I don't necessarily mean that I got great at like punching in numbers and like using the data models, but I, what I got good at was thinking strategically about data. And that's where I really call the creative part of data. Um, I think people usually have a little bit, as I said, like dry sort of understanding of what analytics really is. And in my mind, there are like three types of people. Um, one that are very good at technical, um, building data models and like analyzing and querying the data and everything. Um, second, then you have people who understand a little bit of that, but they're really good at thinking very strategically about how do we collect this data? How do we connect the dots in between? What are the insights we learn? Um, and that partially also involves understanding the world that technologies uh, involve. And then third, which is very rare, uh, at least in my personal experience, are people who actually fit into both. Um, and I do believe that, you know, being scared of numbers is just sometimes, you know, it's just there in your mind and you have to get rid of it. The way I did it was from the, like in the early days of my career, like volunteering for a lot of projects, like helping my entrepreneur friends with their like web analytics um, projects and a little bit and a little bit and kind of like build your confidence with it. Then when I started my um, prior job, I was a digital analyst and then worked my way up, but it was like tackling like little challenges. And the more you do it, it builds up your um, confidence and you find bigger problems to solve. You find better ways to solve them. And like, it also helps you understand like, where do you really fit in in the analytics space? Who do you want to be? Do you want to sit in front of the computer and crunch the numbers? 
and that's where it ends? Or do you want to understand like what's out there? Like there's so much data we collect. There's a sea of information and like be the one who really digs into that so-called like 20%, that's the most valuable for multiple different stakeholders. Um, and then, as I said, the third category of people, I think they're very rare and they're only people that I've seen who are very experienced in either of the first two and then throughout their career, they found a way to get better at the other. And it sounds from your experiencing, just being able to uh, build that strength and, you know, it's, it's a muscle that maybe you haven't used yet with the numbers and being able to say like, I, I can own this, I can be in charge of it and I yes. can be comfortable with it because the strategy, the creativity, um, the, the being able to sit there in others' meetings and, and, and have that love for the, the customer journey and how you're going to be able to optimize that. Those are the things that you're, you're able to do because maybe other team members are going to be more of the people who are coding um, and doing more of that, the, the optimization as far as like building the confidence in your data sets. So, you know, the, I think the more that people understand there's others out there besides just maybe what they think of as like the coder um, who's sitting in front of the computer all day with the headphones on. Um, there's plenty of those, but there's also other areas in analytics. So that's, I think that's very helpful for people to think about. Uh, and also just to say, uh, I remember I went to a conference and they had you, uh, a finance conference, and they had, had you say, I love numbers and numbers love me. And literally had, they had everybody <laughs> chanting it all the time. And then they give you a small problem uh, to figure out. And so it's almost learning to flex that, that muscle so that you can say, I am confident in that, whether it's finding a friend to help in analytics or you know, taking a new class so that you can just see um, what are the other areas. So that way, you know, you're able to have that support um, and people to help build up. And now, are there other um, ways that you found like, or that you would suggest maybe for somebody who's maybe young in their career, it's their first career, or you know, many people are considering career changes um, based off of our current environment. So what would you suggest for them? Good question. I mean, when it comes to career change, I think um, depends like where you, what prior experience you're coming from. And there could be like, different things that you can suggest a person do. But I do believe that when I started out, there were less possibilities, um, less things you could do. But now with all this like online courses available and like so many platforms where you can get connected to different people and companies, like- I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> like we think we're like, oh, when we started back, we're like, we feel like we were in the, the ancient times, but yeah, it's true. <laughs> How quick you're like, oh, if I had all these platforms, like it's amazing, isn't it? Like just, just yeah. what we have access to. <laughs> that is so true. Um, and like I mentioned previously that, you know, I used to do like help a lot of friends, like entrepreneur friends with their like projects when they were just starting out and kind of like I would get an access to Google Analytics, for example, and like do some things in there. Um, but now like you have so many platforms that you can access and just learn the fundamentals of it and then really just go out there. Like, I don't remember the name of it, but there is actually a platform that um, is just specifically for analytics people where you can get hired to offer your services and like get a little bit of experience under your belt. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of career change, I think that the, on a very high level, the best way that I found people always are able to do that is to start tackling some of the analytics projects within your organization mm -hmm. um, or even like doing something on the side. It's, it's a hustle. Um, career change is never really easy when people look at like your resume, they're just like define you in that kind of like frame that, oh, you've always been doing this and they kind of request that you prove why you would be good at it. But I think that depending, as I said, the background you are coming um, from, it will help you reframe these details better. But I think that if you really want to be in analytics, there are so many possibilities with an in organization where you could just show up and say like, hey, I want to help you solve this problem. And here are the things that I could bring in, but like maybe you can help me like look into X, Y, and Z data challenges and just solve that. It could be really tiny. It could be very big. I always suggest that you need to start like small and work your way up um, because you learn differently, I think. But it's all, again, it's, it's individual. So do what works for you. But that would, that's what I would do. And um, you'd mentioned this a, a bit before, but the teacher that you had 
really became a mentor to you. Um, yes. It wasn't just a class. This was somebody who ongoingly. So I know mentorship in your life and I know in mine have always been, um, you know, something that we've seeked out ourselves. Uh, so, you know, another thing for people to think about is who are you surrounding yourself by and who are you making sure that you have that mentor to push you, but also it's never, um, you never have to be at the top level. There's no reason because you don't have, you know, director of a VP of that you aren't mentoring somebody else behind you. Um, you Very never true. know what you're going to learn from them. So um, as far as like when you were seeking out your mentors, what's been the best way for you to do that? Um, I mean, yes, professors have been like number one, um, approaching them and, you know, it, it depends on their personality too. Like some of them are like very strict, very rigid in their ways of doing things. Um, I've been very lucky that I had a few professors that were very approachable. I could just very candidly talk about my challenges and have them mentor me. Um, but in terms of like more, when I started kind of working, um, I, there are two ways, not two ways, but like kind of twofold uh, approach that you could think of when you're thinking about mentors. It is just one, the person who is going to be available, but also even they, even if they are available, like you kind of have to make an effort to go out and look for them. Um, and I was very lucky in the sense that um, I had fantastic people that I worked with. Um, and when I say fantastic, I think more specifically, what I mean is that people that were very visionary about digital experiences, digital analytics, where they were thinking about where things were going and like like five, 10 years ahead, like where things could be. And I kind of was part of feeling like I was part of a mission and I loved it. Um, and I loved being challenged by how do we build for this thing, right? And what's my particular contribution to it? Um, but also it's, you know, when you, you said like, no matter how young you are, you should also mentor others. I think one, greatest opportunity to mentor someone is when you get new teammates on board being like very much willing to help them like navigate your organization first three to six months um and teach them some things like another way would be like i usually get to work with a lot of like digital product owners mm -hmm. and um sometimes they don't always understand all the details that go into tracking and analytics and how can we collect the data and connect the dots in between like seemingly separate things and just being willing to like teach them some things and coach them a little bit um, and be the problem sol solver for them. That's also one way that you can share your knowledge, share your story, hear theirs. But I think personally for me, especially when I was very young in my career, I valued more the experience where I was being mentored mm -hmm. um, in the sense that it accelerated the speed at which I learned things in my field. And the, like the accelerated also the speed at which I was able to jump from like small problems to the bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's a very, um, what I call like materialistic saying that you get paid according to the problems you're solving. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Like it's it's also interesting in terms of your career progression too, like how you are thinking about the problems of your organization and what are the solutions that you're trying to suggest. Mm -hmm. Now, if there, if there are any like go-to resources that you've been drawn to, I know for us, um, the Digital Analytics Association or DAA, um, they're based out of Chicago and I know they've got offices all over. Um, the US has been a great place for us um, to not only find people who are like-minded, but, um, you know, it's also a safe place that you can go. People who are in different agencies and consultancies can be together and, and be asking questions and learning um, from one another. So I know that's one that, that we usually recommend and, and are a part of, but are there any groups or go-to resources that you encourage people to use or read? That's a good question. I'm actually not necessarily part of any organization. Um, and I think, well, let's forget for a moment that we're in this COVID situation, yeah. we're all sitting at home, but um, I think me living in New York really provided access to a lot of great events and conferences. And I used to go to those like very frequently. Mm -hmm. um, but if we take that aspect out, I think, um, if you think about me, I like more investing time in learning about how do we think about analytics? more like, as I said, like strategy and the creative side. So, you know, when I 
think about go to resources, I also think about like, who are the thought leaders for me in that space that could teach me more? Like, um, to start from the closest teacher, put it that way, it's your newsletters. I love receiving InfoTrust newsletters. <laughs> they are always packed with a lot of great stuff. Um, but besides that, like there's this website, for example, like Chief Martech that I absolutely love reading because it expands my knowledge of like, how do we think about marketing technologies? Then that kind of like the trickles down data collection, connecting experiences and so on and so on. Um, there are books that I've loved to read. Um, I think that some of like, if you're especially starting out, uh, there's this great book called Data-Driven Marketing, 15 metrics that every everyone in marketing needs to know. Um, it's a very old book and it's also mostly suited for companies that are um, publicly um, traded, but um, it taught me a lot of fundamentals of how do you use the data to go out and find some things that establish trust within the customer? Um, and it was, it was really eye-opening kind of experience um, for me when I started out. There's also a great book called Precision Marketing uh, that is all about data-driven marketing. And it was great for me to learn, balance the strategy and balance the technicalities to it and the data part. Um, but there are also like, um, there's the website called growth hacking or growthhacker.com, I think, mm -hmm. um, which has wonderful case studies or on how some of the startups were able to use growth hacking strategies, which is combination of data and a good strategy and learning experiences like A-B testing or multivariate testing that you're using through collecting the data and looking at analyzing those has wonderful case studies. Um, like companies like Airbnb, um, uh, Spotify and many others, mm -hmm. tools that we use and like we know how I great just booked one last night. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's interesting um, to see when you see the case studies on the places that you use. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's what I would suggest you use um, on, as a go-to resource. Um, I think one more quick thing that I would add is there are different ways you can think about the, the resources around you that help you keep informed, mm -hmm. keep yourself informed. One is finding the newsletters that you would like to subscribe to that's normal, but also, um, you know, I like to look at companies that like, for example, take like big companies like Salesforce, um, some the, the resources that they have and some of the technical changes that they can make to their platforms that really shifts the landscape. Mm -hmm. I think you need to kind of like keep in, um, keep an eye on those big companies, identify who are interesting big market players and see because of the, the resources they have access to, like what are the big technical changes that they are rolling out to the market? So you can understand the landscape changes as well, whether it's technology or data part. And the other, there are so many wonderful startups that are like constantly coming up with new suggestions and ideas of like, the, one of the biggest changes in our space in digital analytics is that automated way of capturing all the web data. Mm -hmm. um, the other change that you have probably noticed, many of you, is that many of the analytics tool, even Google Analytics does that. You go in and like you can literally ask a question like you would ask a normal person, and it is able to return certain answers to you and certain service the certain data to you. You don't have to go in and look for that. So I think that's another way like how you can learn and observe like what are the next things? What do you need to be aware of? How do you use those tools to... Um, do your job better, basically. And being able to look at what's happening within the market, being able to see out and look at what's happening years out as opposed to your day-to-day -day becomes obviously yeah. part of that strategy and big picture. So as we think of the skill sets, and, and thank you so much, um, it was posted in the chat. Um, one of the questions is, um, and we've got about three minutes here to wrap up, but I think this is a really good one to hit. Um, you know, numbers is some of the reasons that people don't come into this, but if you could list out what are the skill sets, you know, even ones that you've learned either from the career or school that you really felt were the, the you know, the foundation, what really helped you excel in your career? Um, sure. I think coding is one. Pick a language that you would like to explore. At least, I think at least one of those you need to know. I mean, um, I know a little bit of many things um, and I'm not an expert on any of those um, but it depends on where you want to go like there could be like you can 
let learn like R and Python if you are more like looking to build leader models and you want to be kind of more heavy on that side. I think because I would like to more kind of sit back and think about the strategic part of data and go a little crazy and creative, like here are all the things that we can track and collect and all this insights we can build and stuff. I think for me, it's like understanding a little bit of um, even like um, web um, coding languages that we have so that I can work with the development teams a little bit more effectively. Um, those are the basics that you can, I don't know, find like Udemy or Coursera or whatever you want, like you can always learn. But I do believe that um, if there is more, you would like to be kind of, um, I hate to put it that way, but more like me, and you're not necessarily interested in the heavy data analytics piece, um, I think you, you would find it interesting that learning about fundamentals and understanding like where things are going and how things are changing in, in your area, like wherever your company is in whatever industry, it's important because it will help you put a basic framework in place where that you'll be able to solve better problems with whatever data you can get hands on. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm heavily involved and throughout my career have been involved in marketing and I've always worked with marketing teams. I get interested in things like, there's this great book called Hacking Marketing which literally explains to you how you can manage the marketing as literally a software, like entire processes, how do you plan the data that you collect, how do you look at all the insights, every process that goes into the marketing operations and rolling out your campaign successfully and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm reading this book called um, How Not to Be Wrong, Power of Math Mathematical Thinking. It is a great book. Some charts are very boring because it explains a lot of like mathematical, uh, part of uh, like, you know, equations and stuff. And I'm like, not again, but um, <laughs> overall, like the use case of how you can use the, the numbers and math, put it that way to solve the real life problems, like that kind of thinking that and kind of expanding my way of asking right questions and thinking in a different way than other people do has been very helpful. And one, just because I've seen you in meetings and seen you present, that you didn't mention is communication presentation. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, that is one of the ones that I tell people, especially if you know people who are just starting out in their careers. Please go take um, a presentation course. I know that that was one of the ones we had in college where you got up and you did like three different presentations, and then that's probably all you got in college. But the more that you can present and share what you found and persuade people and influence them. I, I think that at this point in your career, it comes off so naturally because you've done it so much, but I'm sure that it's something that you practiced earlier on in your career and became a master at. So that's um, definitely another one. <laughs> yeah, I, I would agree. And I think that part of the reason why I probably didn't mention that, despite how important it is, is that that's a life skill. Yeah. That's a life, whether you are in analytics or not, like that's a life skill you need to have when you're working with stakeholders whoever you're working with, your teammates, your partners, your bosses, you need that even at home to negotiate. <laughs> but you can your... practice on your, exactly. on your roommates <laughs> and your parents. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you. That's so, an important life skill. Yeah, that's, I mean, the being able to see, and, and Brenda mentioned it, you know, creativity and analytics. Um, it should be a new way that we call analytics or that we start pairing those together because you know, it is so much more than just number crunching and people should be aware of that because there's probably many people who this career is very well suited for. Um, so please, um, if you're out there and you're thinking about either a career change or you're new in this, um, there's obviously so much more to it. Uh, and thank you, Miriam, so much for your time today thank and you. for being a part of our Women in Analytics, in analytics series. Uh, we're looking forward to doing these. Um, Brad is back on, so he'll be able to share a little bit more about um, what this looks like going forward. Yes, a big virtual applause for both Stacy and Miriam. Uh, what an amazing first session. Um, I picked up a couple of things, right? Like first find, find mentors, no matter what age you are, like find those people around you. You two would both great examples. You're gonna be flooded with, uh, of, you're gonna be flooded with requests now to say, can you be my mentor? <laughs> so I think you two would be fantastic for that. There's lots of resources. I know that was mentioned multiple times. There's so much resources that were available today that weren't available historically. Don't be afraid, whether it's numbers or something else. Um, a lot of times we think of analytics and it's like, again, you have to be the coder, but you don't have to be the coder. There's a lot of things and variations of analytics 
that we need. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to add on just like for you parents out there that have daughters, like get them inspired behind this field or other fields, just kind of break the mold of, of different areas where they can do, whether it's your books, et cetera. But that's kind of the big push and passion that I have for my own girls. And I'm excited to announce the next Women in Analytics event is already scheduled for November 19th. So stay tuned on who that person will be. But thank you, thank you, thank you, Miriam. It's been amazing. Thanks for your friendship, partnership. Uh, you're an inspiration for us all. And thank you, Stacy. you guys nailed it. So have a great rest of your day, everybody. And cheers to the next one. You too. Thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.